impressive. They've got a great O-line, great offense, wide open running back room. This is easily the number one landing spot. Hello and welcome to another edition of Fantasy Football Freaks. I'm Jason, he's Vaz, and today we're continuing our best landing spots for rookies through the NFL Draft. In our previous video, we already did the best landing spots for quarterbacks, and today we're going to look at the best landing spots for running backs. Now, this is going to be a weaker running draft class than in the more recent years that we've had. However, so often a good landing spot can make the running back over even the talent of said running back. So these landing spots are so important. Keep track of where the rookies land because that can highly increase their values. Vaz has spent a lot of time uh, creating this list, analyzing, researching. So Vaz, uh, let uh, you give the details on how you're going to work this and, and what you've uh, done so far with this. Okay, so what I did was I separated uh, the 14 teams who I believe are most likely to draft a running back in the first three to four rounds. Um, and then I took away the, the 18 teams that I think are unlikely to draft a running back. It's possible they do, but I think if they did, it would be like uh, Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet type situation. And I don't think anybody's really as good as Zach Charbonnet, so I don't think... Even if they did draft a running back early, those teams, I don't think they would supplant the starter. So I don't think you have to be too worried about it if you're like, say, a Brees Hall owner or something like that. Okay. So let, can you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So uh, we don't have to worry about the uh, 18 teams that don't really need a running back to the highest of levels. But uh, we are going to go over the top 14 uh, yeah. landing spots. So if you are a rookie running back, then these are the teams that you want to be drafted by. And if you are doing or have done your uh, fantasy football rookie draft prior to the NFL draft, these are the places that you want your chosen running backs to land in. So let's uh, take a look at the list, Vaz, starting with team number 14. Yes. Okay. Let's try to get through this a little bit quickly. But uh, number 14 for me is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I think it's possible they draft a running back, however, unlikely, because they have two guys in place. Uh, they've got Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. So I think if they were to draft a running back, they might even that running back might even start as number three on the depth chart. Um the reason I have them as a potential suitor is just because Najee's in the last year of his contract. So it's possible that they draft a running back. However, I do think it's unlikely. Yeah. But this is my my uh, my 14th spot, also because their offensive line is pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah. Although they'll might, they might invest some money into that in the future, but uh, certainly for they the may. time being. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at number 13 on your list. Okay, number 13 is the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the reason for that is I think there aren't any running backs in this class who are going to supplant uh, Rashad White. So I think if a running back gets drafted there, they are going to start number two on the depth chart and probably remain number two on the depth chart. Um, I think it's possible that Tampa does take a running back because I don't know if Rashad, if they can count on Rashad White to handle the same workload he did uh, last year. But I... Uh, if I owned a, if I uh, were to draft a running back, I wouldn't want them to go to the Bucks because I think Rashad White is firmly established as the one A. Okay, let's take a look at number twelve on your list. Uh, who are the Rams? Correct. So this goes back to what I was saying about the Bucks. I think it's a similar situation in that Kyron is pretty firmly established as at least the one A, but I think the Rams could add another back because they've experienced a lot of injuries and they've been plugging in a lot of pretty bad running backs over the past couple of years. So I think uh, they could draft a running back, but if they do, it would, they would probably be uh, the one B to Kyron's one a, so I wouldn't want to get drafted to the Rams despite them having a pretty decent offense. Yeah. And of course, McVay uh, usually has very productive running backs, but for the time being, as mentioned, that is Kyron, maybe not the guy incoming. Yeah. Let's take a look at yeah. number 11 on your list. Okay, number 11 is the Denver Broncos. Uh, I think it's possible they draft a running back. Uh, however, I also think it's a little bit unlikely. But uh, 
right now they have Javante and uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, right? As their top two running backs and Sam Samaji P. Ryan as well. So they, they've got a pretty uh, loaded depth chart there. But I think, you know, uh, we don't really know what Javante is. And he's on the last year of his contract. And then Jaleel's undersized and S Samaji's kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah, Samaji, Samaji. So it's possible they draft a running back. But uh, I think that depth chart is pretty crowded. So I, and I don't think the offense is particularly good either without a, like established quarterback. So I wouldn't want to go there if I'm a rookie running back. <laughs> yeah, certainly not a team that I have confidence in, in terms of winning games or leading games in the fourth quarter as well, especially in the the, the division that they're in uh, certainly makes it tough for them as well. Let's take a look at number 10 on your list for landing spots for running backs. Okay. Number 10, we're starting to get a little bit better now. And that's the uh, New York giants. They don't have a great O-line, but their top back is Devin Singletary, and I think he's not particularly talented. So I think if a good running back like was drafted there at the beginning of round three, let's say, then they'd have an excellent chance to overtake the 1A role. So that's this is the first spot where I'd feel pretty optimistic if I were to get a running back with the Giants. But the reason they are still so low on my list at number 10 is because that offense is pretty bad. And that O-line is pretty bad. Even uh, Saquon couldn't do much there, right? And he's an elite talent. So I don't love it, but at least they'd have an opportunity to grab a bunch of carries. Yeah, certainly uh, not the place that a running back necessarily wants to go to. But if you want opportunity and you believe yep. in yourself, then not a bad place. Let's take a look at number nine on your list. Okay, number nine is the Vegas Raiders. Uh, maybe similar to the Giants, they have uh, Madison and Zamir White as their top two backs there. I don't think either are particularly talented. And uh, I think if a, a rookie running back gets drafted there, they have an excellent opportunity to, uh, at some point, take over lead duties. Um, also, that offense is a little bit better, despite having an absolutely terrible offensive line, where, uh, you know, so even, even if they do get drafted there, it's going to be difficult to run to run for a big yardage. But the potent, the opportunity is there with the lack of talent in the running back room. All right. Let's take a look at number eight on your list for running back landing spots. Okay. A little bit of a trend here. So number eight is the Carolina Panthers. And again, a little bit of a trend because I think the running back room isn't overly talented. Uh, again, kind of a poor offensive line. So yeah, there's definitely a trend here. Bat, not a great offense, not a great offensive line, but opportunity. So they are number eight because there is opportunity. The They have Hubbard as the, as the top running back in Carolina, and I, he's not particularly talented either. So if a, if a running back goes there, I'd feel op optimistic that they could uh, take over lead duties. Yeah, maybe especially if it's a, a good pass catching running back as well, because they're going to be trailing a lot of games. But if you're a, a pass catcher, you can get a lot of uh, production still. Very true. Yeah, let's take a look at number seven on your list. Okay, number seven, finally, a good offense, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, they have an established running back in Cook as their 1A, but he's also a little bit undersized, and I think he's a little bit susceptible to injury. Uh, so if I'm drafted to the Buffalo Bills or if I have a player uh, on my dynasty dynasty team that's drafted to the Buffalo Bills, I feel a little bit optimistic because I think if given the opportunity, it's an excellent offense and uh, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to score points. So uh, you're playing with Josh Allen, you know, uh, Cook only has two more years left on his rookie deal. So if you, if you have if dynasty after all, like if you have time to wait, this is an excellent landing spot. Yeah. Can't argue with that uh, one bit. Uh, who is number six on your list? Okay, number six, we got the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, so I think the Arizona Cardinals uh, don't have a great offensive line, but this is, an, in my opinion, an ascending offense. You know, they're getting Kyler Murray back healthy. They're probably going to draft like Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, or another top-end wide receiver talent. Uh, I think they will be better on offense. I think there will be more opportunities to score points. And um, who's their running back there? I'm going drawing a blank. Uh, with uh, the Cardinals is uh, James yeah. Conner. James Connor, James Connor and uh, Michael Carter. Carter, correct. Yeah. yeah. So uh, James Connor is a good player, but he's on the last year of his of his uh, contract. He's in his contract year. So I think, and he's getting up there, right? So I think if they do draft a running back, it's with the intention of taking over next year when perhaps the Cardinals are a little bit better of a team. So I think if you're if you're playing dynasty and you're willing to wait a year, then this is an excellent spot, you know. But uh, again, the the talent in the running back class isn't isn't great. So I think. 
If you go to the Cardinals, you're hoping it's in round two or three. Okay, and uh, we are into the top five of landing spots for running backs. Uh, who is number five? Now, I can't do it for you. The inches we need are everywhere around us. What are you going to do? Why? 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 Subscribe. 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 Uh, number five is the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, I know that they have Pacheco there, who's a very good player. But you know what? They have Patrick Mahomes as well. Mm -hmm. And they have a top five offensive line. And they're going to score a bunch of points. And uh, I know Pacheco's not going anywhere. But you know, I think CEH is go probably going to get, you know, he's, he's done pretty soon. When his rookie contract runs out, they're not bringing him back, I doubt, anyways. Um and they need, at, at the very least, they need a pass-catching running back. And a pass-catching running back is playable uh, in, in, in fantasy football. A, a Kansas City Chiefs third-down running back is playable. There's plenty of opportunities for points in that offense. So even if you just get a pass-catcher in Kansas City, I think it's a, a fantastic landing spot. And then, yeah, like, uh, you know, there's always the potential for more if, if, if Pacheco doesn't work out or whatnot. Or if uh, Pacheco gets injured, I mean, imagine uh, having a rookie running like Pacheco as well, by the way, who goes to uh, Kansas City without the highest of expectations, but then all of a sudden through good fortune becomes the lead back. And uh, certainly yeah. Pacheco's become great because of that. I love the landing spot for for Kansas City if, if I've got a, a high draft pick. Let's take a look at number four best landing spots for running backs uh, after the draft. Okay, number four is the LA Chargers. Uh, I think this one is pretty self-explanatory as well. They, uh, they've they got a wide open running back room. They've got uh, an elite quarterback, not elite, but a very good quarterback in my opinion. They've got an above average offensive line as well. So there's a lot of uh, potential here for carries. Uh, I think you can imagine that a running back draft in the top three rounds would have the opportunity to take over that backfield sooner rather than later. And then... If they can uh, perform, then there's a lot of potential for points out of this offense. Yeah, of course, Gus Edwards, the top running back over there right now, who knows uh, how long he'll hold that. And of course, Jim Harbaugh, we saw what he did in uh, Michigan in terms of the running game, uh, literally lowering the draft stock of J.J. <laughs> McCarthy. So yeah. uh, if you are a lead running back in a Jim Harbaugh offense, and there's a good chance that that can be a good thing for your future, I love the landing spot for the Chargers. Uh, how about number three on your list? for landing spots okay number three is the minnesota vikings um so they're here above the chargers for me because they have a better offensive line and then aaron jones i don't think is capable of handling the load anymore so i think they will draft a running back and with the intention of kind of platooning with aaron jones this year and then taking over next year so if i have a, a running back drafted to the vikings in the top three rounds i'm ecstatic because i look at it as like uh this year we might have to wait like a little bit but next year we're going to be ready to take off with this offense good offense a uh, good offensive line lots of opportunity and i think you know this is a great great landing spot yeah, and another thing that I like is I like running backs who play indoor on turf where you can get good traction and make those jukes. I remember like uh, back in the old days, Barry Sanders, uh, his numbers on AstroTurf compared to on grass were were day and really? night as an example. Yeah, because you could just cut better on, uh, on turf compared to natural grass. But uh, yeah, certainly Minnesota, another great landing spot, but uh, not one of your best two. Uh, who is second best for landing spots for running backs? Second best is the Cincinnati Bengals. So I have them at number two for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one being Joe Burrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two being uh, a very good offensive line, an above average offensive line, and also uh, a weak running back room. So I think uh, Zach Moss is currently their top running back. And I think he's pretty, you know, easily uh, beatable in terms of that de depth chart. So if they were to draft a running back high, I think it would be, you know, the second best landing spot possible. <laughs> 
Yeah. The the only concern with Cincinnati for me is just the the division is such a tough, tough, uh, hard nose uh, division when it comes to playing defense, uh, especially against the run. But uh, yeah, certainly when you look at that team and the opportunity for them to have fourth quarter leads, and uh, as mentioned, especially if it's a decent uh, pass catching back, then uh, Burrow can hopefully take advantage of him as well. But your best landing spot, I think most people would agree with this, uh, is the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, of course. So uh, their their running back room is absolutely barren, right? Like Rico Dowdle is the, is the <laughs> top back there. So they're definitely drafting somebody, and I think everybody's hoping they draft somebody in the second round. Um, they also have a top 10 offensive line. They, you know, they have a very good offense with, you know, Dak and CD. So they're scoring a ton of points. So they got a great O-line, great offense, wide open running back room. This is easily the number one landing spot. There have been rumors of uh, Ezekiel Elliott saying that he would love yeah. a reunion back with uh, Dallas. But even if he were to re-sign with the Cowboys, you've got to think that, you know, because of age as well as production to a certain degree, it still has to be the number one landing spot, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, like even when the CD was there a couple of seasons ago, they didn't want him carrying the full load. So I think if even if they were to sign somebody like Zeke uh, and then draft somebody, Zeke is the 1B. I think yeah. the, the guy they bring in, especially if it's round two, uh, then they're going to be the starter. They're going to get every opportunity to carry the load. And then Zeke will be the guy that spells him. So, you know, Zeke is well past his prime at this point. Yeah. Well, as the NFL draft comes up later in the month of April, keep track of where the rookie running backs land and whichever one lands with Dallas, certainly bump up his value significantly because as mentioned, uh, landing spot can outweigh talent in a lot of occasions. So we're going to continue to produce these top landing spots for uh, NFL rookies through the draft. We've already done quarterbacks. This is our running back video. We're going to continue with wide receivers and tight ends as well. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you're notified as soon as our next video is up. Otherwise, remember to like this video as well. And we'll see you next time for another edition of Fantasy Football Freaks.